Well, we're carrying on with the neck today, and uh, one thing, let's get done what I always damn well forget. Um, let's get some side dots in the neck. Um, that's a very simple job, really. Um, I just use a, a plastic, white plastic rod on this. I would ideally like thinner, but um, I think this will just be okay. Uh, I think it's three, 2.5, 3 mil, something like that. Um, when I'm doing these dots, to be honest, I, I, I prefer to mark them out by eye. Um, I've tried measuring and all that before, but I seem to just make a better job of it by eye sort of thing. Um, but you've obviously got to get them in the centre of the frets, but yeah, we'll just mark them up and very simple. Mark them on the right side. <laughs> And then what I like to do, I actually like to centre center punch them because with like thin drills, sometimes they can wobble a little bit. So, just got a centre punch there. got some dots punched in the side there so we'll just get on and drill those get you over to my drill press the holes in the side so we'll just glue it in glue them in now Oh, 
I just use super glue. Uh, it's quite quite quick and easy. Nice easy job to start the day off with, we let those set and then file and file them down. Okay well uh, yeah these are the side dots now finished. I guarantee if I'd have tried to measure them I'd have made a mess of it but by eye that's nice and simple. Um, now the thing is I haven't done any work really on the frets um, until uh, you know other than pressing them in really. Um, and filing the edges square um, with the fretboard sort of thing so I could shape the neck. Next what I want to do is, is, is slope the, just put a little chamfer on the edges of the frets. So I've got this which is a proprietary um, diamond file sort of thing for doing fretboards with. Um, I really like it. Um, it's dead flat for the job kind of thing. I think it was another Crimson Guitars purchase, I can't remember, but um, you want about a 30 degree edge angle and you know with this file it doesn't take long and it's nice and flat. There we go, we've got a, a chamfer on the edge of the frets now. Um, you can get like a proprietary file with a, with a set angle on it and by all means use one of those. I haven't got one. Um, I like to file, file the edges and you can actually feel when the file is starting to touch the, the edge of the fretboard as the, as, the file, as the frets get chamfered. Um, I like to take it a little bit further so there's a so the actual edge of the fretboard is actually very slightly it's got the corner knocked off it I just think it makes it more comfortable to play um, now as with with the top of the frets of course they should be leveled um, I'll, I'll get on and do that I think um, again it's not a it, I've never done a mandolin fretboard before and it's so small that um, yeah let's have a think, a think on that one well I've been thinking about these frets and I think I'll do it by the way I normally do a guitar um, fretboard 
a lot of people go straight over it with a um, you know a straight edge with 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 uh, um, sandpaper on it, fine sandpaper, and just do the whole fretboard. Um, I don't necessarily like doing that. I prefer to firstly go over and check all the frets because, you know, if you, this is a fret leveling um, tool, and you put it across three frets. So um, if you put it on here, try and rock it. And if it rocks, and I hope you can hear that. So the centre of those frets is fractionally high in the middle, but not at the edge. So, you know, by looking over it, you can have a look, and 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 you can double check your frets before you start filing them. And think well why is that fret a little bit higher I mean might it might be just yeah it does need a little bit of sanding um, which in this case it does or you might see that a fret has moved off the fretboard a little bit so I like to go up and down the whole fretboard check the frets first see if there's any one that's come unstuck from the fretboard or is just a little high and you can give it a little tap down you know and um, before you start filing sort of thing so I I like to get the frets on the fretboard reasonably level before I put a straight edge over it sort of thing. Um, so I'll get on and check all these frets, knock down the ones that are high, um, you know, just individually sort of thing, and then start going over the whole fretboard. Well, there's 101 um, videos on YouTube of how to how to level frets and set up your guitar so I don't really want to you know reinvent the wheel on here um, I've you know horses for courses just how you fancy doing it really the thing is frets have got to be flat um, so I've been over them now with um, fret leveling and using this straight edge one thing with this straight edge is check the frets uh, in the middle and at each end so go over them about five times or slide the thing across and if you've got any any um, wasps you've got any like wobble on it then it's a high fret and you've got to file it down um, now I've got them filed down and they're uh, you know they're flat now you need to re recrown and polish them and I've got these um, these two pr proprietary files um, for doing exactly that. I, I I don't particularly like the the pre the ones that have got like um, a gutter shape on them that you can just go over the fret. I, I don't really like using those. Some people might, but um, these ones, this particular one, has like a a rounded safe edge on the bottom. Um, on both sides of polished things so it shouldn't dig into the wood at all and I like using that I mean a lot of people as well tape up the fretboard between the frets but ugh, I'm not, I'm not going to do that on this I can't be bothered um, so I'll just give it a good cleaning afterwards um, I find that taping it up anyway you cut through the tape in no time at all so um, anyway so you know this is just a question of going over each fret and getting the right camber on it um, and getting a fairly fairly nice top to the fret you don't want to flat a top on the fret apart from it being uncomfortable it upsets the intonation of the string so you want to try and get an apex in the middle of the fret wire kind of thing so it just takes a long time and uh, you know when you've done that then it's polishing the frets and yeah it's a never-ending job but it's worth it because that's the heart of the instrument so I'll just get on with that well I've spent about an hour doing the fretboard now um, polishing the frets and everything um, with the edges of the frets um, a lot of people get the get their fret file and like you know put it on and, and, and round off the edge which is which is a nice thing to do takes the sharp edges off but one way a really 
my favourite way of cleaning up the edge of the fretboard um, is just actually running, I've got 2000 grit um, emery paper here and just, just rubbing it like that just simply and it, it just you know it, it mimics the way you play the guitar and wear the frets down so you get a nice um, rounding between the frets give you gives it that kind of vintage look which I want for that where you know you've got a nice rounding off of the fretboard that makes it very comfortable to play like I say it's it's kind of mimicking the you know the way you play the guitar sort of thing or the or the mandolin um, I mean like I say I'm I'm after a um, an old look for this instrument I'm a, that's what I, that's what I do mainly is is, is you know I, I like vintage instruments make I'm making instruments look old um, whether you like it or not it's an opinion I realize that but um, on this instrument I'm, I'm, I'm definitely not going for anything that looks brand spanking new I'm gonna be finishing shellac and I want it to have that like um, you know worn look kind of thing so I'm not overly concerned about like I say I didn't tape up between the frets or anything I, I, I don't mind the marks on it um, I mean it's a lovely looking bit of rosewood on there and I just think it looks nice with a bit of age so I've, I cleaned it off with methylated spirits to get rid of all the sanding junk that was on there um, gave it a good wipe over with that and then went over it with um, with some lemon oil or any old oil really um, and sunflower oil would be probably be all right but um, yeah so um, we've got most of the fretboard done now I think to the level where I you know I'd be happy putting it putting the neck on the on the on the instrument sort of thing because between these uh, um, liar arms there's no axis is quite restricted sort of thing so I want it I want to get the main part of the neck hard work on the neck done and um, I still haven't ordered any tuners for it yet and obviously I'll be going for banjo style tuners um, I want geared tuners on it I don't want friction tuners um, got a truss rod cover to make for it which isn't on the original so I'm not, I'm not quite you know obviously the original didn't have a truss rod um, so I'm you know, debating about that a little bit whether to try and make it invisible or make it obvious I don't know um, so I've got tuna holes to draw I've got a top nut as well to get and put on there um, so but mind you there's plenty to do to the body before then so I think I'll be working on that for the for the rest of the day back to sanding and um, or as I say sanding because I say that because one of my favorite sketches in Monty Python is the marching sketch that's great so whenever my wife says to me what are you going to be doing in the shed today just you know, as you go down the Monty Python route with that one but uh, anyway um, Yep, back to sanding. Uh, hi there. Um, I've been trying to decide what to do with these uh, swan nets here. Um, obviously, like you know, I cut them off so I could sand the inside better, which that, that's a really big bonus. Um, and my idea was to make remake the the foot part whatever this bit is in here um, I started off I made I made these and I made a couple of these and put them in and I thought oh yeah, they look great you know no no problem um, but I could see quite a, an issue here as to what what do I do um, you know you've got an extra bit of just how to how to run these into one another and have a nice edge. Um, then I had a look at the picture and decided that my foot, my this bit, was much thinner than um, the, you know, on the actual instrument. So, but I quite liked it in there. I thought, oh, that looked quite nice, but I, I just couldn't live with it, sort of thing. So, I made a thicker one, more, more like the original put it on and I thought oh yeah now that that actually does look that actually does look right you know so I'm happy with that kind of thing but I think it is going to be really really awkward to get like uh, a nice 
nice looking finish on that and the bit I'm most worried about is is here obviously this has got to be like filed down so it's a uh, you know in there it's got to be filed down so it's a nice curve into the into the foot kind of thing um, and I was kind of thinking what I could do um, is I, I'd really want a beautiful line straight line across there on the joint but that is that is going to be so difficult to get right um, and then there's two two things I can think one is actually okay you know it's got to be the right shape so just basically you know file and, and carve it to shape sort of thing with a nice curve and then do kind of a uh, a violin style spray job like you get on the back of the, the back of the neck by the headstock where it's kind of dark and shaded in kind of thing um, and then I thought well maybe another plan would be once I've got it um, carved to shape kind of thing I could actually then saw a straight line across and take about a millimeter off and put a bit of veneer over the top so I get a really nice sharp edge there but you know uh, I, I think these are plans I'll have to keep in mind and see which one works best at the time but in the meantime, before I glue these the, the, these things in place, I've, I've got to really sand all the all the inside to like a finish. Otherwise, it's it's I'm going to be back in square one. So that's what I'm going to do today. A bit of a pain, but um, there we go. Well, um, I got these swans necks glued on yesterday after making them like I said I started off with one like that was a bit thin um, when it was on there uh, if you, after doing that I looked at the original picture and uh, they were obviously like quite fatter so I remade them and now you can see them on there it was actually quite a tricky job like I say I think it was a bit of a catch-22 because with those feet on there, I ca you can't really sand in in the scroll. Um, without the feet on there, it's quite an easy job. So without the feet on there, I sanded them. But that's presented me with a problem now of I think what to do with these edges here. And my idea is that I'm going to um, file, carve them nice and smooth with like a you know no transition between the the foot here or whatever you call it the beak of the swan and, and, and this curve area so I'm gonna sand that smooth file it smooth and then what I might do is just because obviously th this sharp edge here will obviously get like broken up um, when I when I get it down to the right curve so then what I might do is um, just just do a rebate of about half a millimetre and then cut across this line with a scalpel. So I've got a nice sharp line there and actually inlay a piece of maple veneer on top there. So um, it'll, you know, it'll blend in nicer. Because um, I think the problem you've got is you've got obviously got three different types of wood here. You've got the maple, the mahogany, and the the spruce top, the pine top. Um, well, you're not going to kind of match all those in really. So um, we'll see how it goes. The other option is when I've done it, if I'm really that still not that keen on it, is I'm going to do a kind of violin style neck spray job on here with with um, a darker color so it kind of um, comes down dark sort of thing and then you won't see it but we'll see what it looks like when it's sanded up so next I'm going to move on to um, these feet down here um, much the same they're a bit smaller 
um, but we all, you know, we're obviously aiming for roughly the same sort of thing like that, but smaller. So I'll get measuring that out and uh, working on those sort of thing and try and get those in place today. Um, the body's feeling actually quite heavy now, which I'm a bit slightly disappointed at, but I think this, this like back, back, actually mahogany, uh, uh, is ve ve very hard, strange wood actually. I mean, I'm, I don't know what exact species it is. I mean, it's obviously a type of mahogany, but it's, it's quite hard and heavy. And so although the instrument is heavy, it still may have quite a good sound because I'm sure this back is very ringy. So, you know, I'm looking, you know, it'd be interesting to see what it sounds like. Um, also, when I finish off the top, I think it's still a bit thick, so I'll be sanding that area thinner, sort of thing. I mean, it's got a definitely got a bend in it now, which is what you want, really. So we'll see how it goes, but we'll get on with these feet down here. Well, this is how I basically start off with the feet, just saw a bit of wood roughly to this shape on the band. So again, this is the second one I've made. I don't know how many of these things I've made till they look right, but. The first one just seemed too short when it went in there, so we've got the second one now. It's obviously too long now, but like um, at least I can start uh, getting it to uh, getting it to some kind of shape. Um, I think probably like five, ten mil will have to come off it, but the the original one that I cut um, fitted nicely, but it's just just too short sort of thing so I think I want, I want it to be a bit longer than that so um, yeah I don't know how many of these I've made I've got them lying around everywhere um, till, till they look right sort of thing but looking at looking at this it's a bit it's a bit odd because the the little tiles on the um, on, 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 on these things seem really long um, on the mahogany one, I think mean, you can just see on the better lit corner here that there's hardly any tail on it, sort of thing. So they they obviously varied a little bit. Um, so I'm going for a bit of a halfway house. The main reason being is that's as thick as the maple I've got, sort of thing. So. We're just going to stick with that and it will it will match the ones I've already glued in at the top. So that's like fine. Um, yep, so what I'm going to do next is just round round this off. I mean, it's all basically handwork sort of thing. i just use my cheese grater file and put a, try and straighten it up a little bit as well. So we've got a bit of a curve in it now, so we can start matching it up to the the scroll already here, sort of thing. I think I'll try and come up with a sensible length for it now, actually.
auf der Land. Probably saw it too short, but there we go. Now we're all right. God, it does look short. No, that's a bit right. So I think we're actually getting quite close there, sort of thing. So um, carry on with the fitting. I'm just going to file this uh, little chamfer on the edge of it now. on the edge we'll see how that fits Yeah, to be honest, it doesn't actually fit that well. Um, problem I've got is that when I push it in, um, it's touching the, the edge of the body there before it gets flat. So I've got a couple of choices. I can either make this foot thinner, um, which I don't really want to do because it's the same thickness as these up here. So what I think I'll do is just work on on uh, cutting this at a slightly less angle, filing it down, so uh, we'll get on with that. And I've just glued the bottom ones on as well, um, and for some reason they were even more difficult. Um, I don't know why, but I was just there for ages doing them, and, and um, anyway, they're all glued in now. You can see I've just glued these, I've just got a couple of wedges I made. To, to put them in and you know they're nice and square with the with the body there's so many variables you've got to get the same and it's just oh really difficult and you know I can see even on this one it's slightly slightly thicker one end than the other and whatnot but oh, I, I literally I I was at wit's end with the damn thing and uh, getting quite frustrated so I decided cut my losses, glue them all in and uh, then I could move on. Um, so the next bit, sorry about all the waffle, but the next bit I want to do is obviously I've got to tidy up um, like these joints here and I don't quite know what I'm going to do but it, it, it's going to be a veneer job I think I'm gonna I mean you know I've got to I've got to curve these ends off so they look like one one piece of you know one consistent curve sort of thing as you can see from the original so I'm gonna file those to a nice curve then I've got some um, maple veneer so I'm thinking then what I'll do is I'll put put a piece of veneer over there, something like that, or whatever, just 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 to make it look the same. I don't quite know yet, but I'll I'll just uh, uh, work that one out when we um, you know when I when I get to it, sort of thing. So not yeah, not overly happy with the results so far, but hopefully with a bit more work. Um, we'll get there and 
you know, it, it just, it's just been an incredibly fiddly job, you know, things like getting all these, like, you know, um, these like areas down here the same both sides and getting them even and things like that I and mean, I've spent a lot of time sanding and fiddling around and it's it's, it's um, been surprisingly more of a problem than than I thought I mean it's not unusual with builds that you think oh yeah I'll just spend five minutes doing that and it takes you like sort of you know hours on end it's just the way the cookie crumbles sort of thing so anyway We'll get back to it tomorrow when that glue's set and uh, see where we are then. Well, um, there's not really too much, uh, like a great, great deal of massive steps being made in the build at the moment. It is really mainly, to be honest, just getting ready to um, start applying a finish, really. It sort of suddenly creeps up on you a bit. Um, you know, you get all the major components made and then you're... Uh, you know, you stick them together and you've got an instrument and then you've got to make it, make it good enough to apply a finish. The trouble is, and, and that simple phrase um, uh, leads to an awful lot of work, like basically sanding. Um, you know over the last uh, few episodes I've really been struggling with um, these like uh, swan necks um, on, the, on the corners, if you like, of the instrument and really been in a quandary regarding um, how to how to actually do them. Just to recap, and I think I've said it far too many times, but um, in order to, you know, sand in these areas, I, I couldn't get in there with these like beak parts on the instrument. And when I tried to incorporate those in the main build, it was to be honest a bit of a disaster they were all a bit different I couldn't get these areas done properly and all that so I ended up as you remember like cutting them off completely um, just along that upper line there which gave me axis in here to sand all that nice and smooth and then I made the feet and glued them on but that led to other problems in in the you know you wanted a nice curve around this bit and all that and and you've got this is a separate bit of wood there's the back the sides the top three different different types of wood there as well so it's a very difficult job to kind of match in and one of my thoughts was to you know once the once the beak was glued in if you like I was going to veneer up here but I I was just getting more and more frustrated with it in that everything I did was basically leading to uh, more problems to overcome sort of thing and I just figured that if I was gonna um, you know put a bit of veneer over the bottom here just to do this nice curve uh, I'd, I'd have to end the veneer somehow and like it, it just was turning to be a nightmare so I did something that um, <laughs> I, I don't often do with um, with musical instruments or very rarely like to do because it, I mean, let's be honest, it has to be considered a bit of a bodge. I filled it, um, I used filler on it, and now you can see that the you know they, they've got a lovely profile, the ends there, but they've got filler on here a little bit of filler, um, and there, and equally, the, the bottom ones are really nice now. Um, but again, they are filled. I mean, it's thin filler, really thin, just to get just to, just to get it like uh, the you know skim skim off the edges kind of thing. Um, but yeah, I'll admit it. I've been defeated uh, trying to do these 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 parts in a in what would be considered a proper Lutheran way. Um, I've just had to do the filler, and I'm. In retrospect, of when I was applying the filler, I wasn't particularly like happy with myself, kind of thing. But having done it now, it, I, I'm just over the moon with the with the shape of it and how they've come on. So, what I'll be doing with these field these field areas is, I think I'll be doing um, I'll be spraying it with my airbrush with a stain. So, I think these 
these parts here are going to look like, you know, the typical areas like you get round a vi the back of a violin neck sort of thing, um, which, you know, hopefully won't be too won't, won't detract too much from the instrument. Um, moving on from there, I've been doing a lot of sanding, as you can see, on the thing. Um, it's not something you can, uh, you know, you're not going to get done in, uh, din done in five minutes. You've just got to set yourself up and think, right, this is going to be days sort of thing. And, you know, I must have been sanding it for probably like three hours on and off today. Um, but uh, what's proving to be quite difficult is, is, is these like, little sort of rebates in the edge here, getting those nice and even, not not getting that kind of inner line wobbly um, and getting it parallel to the outside that's taking a lot of time and there's a lot of that to do but I think um, doing it you know if I don't get that right it's not going to look nice so at the moment I'm I'm really happy with uh, how it's looking really happy um, I'll, I'll, I'll add that um, with the filler I'm using I use um, uh, trying to find the, f the firm that make it. Um, I know they do lacquer as well, but this is the wood filler I use. Um, it's great because it's softer than the wood. You don't want to, if you use car filler or something like that, that that has a hardener mixed with it. It's usually harder than the wood, and when you're sanding it down, you end up, you know, with a lump of filler because it's harder than the because it's harder than what's surrounding it, kind of thing. Um, Morels, that's what this is, I think. Um, this stuff is really soft and, um, or oh, not, not, not soft squidgy, but you know, nice and nice and soft to sand, and it dries quite quickly. There's no hardener, and um, I use it generally if, you know, someone sends me a guitar body for painting or something, and you know, they've got a few gouges in it. Um, I'll use a, a dab of this kind of thing. Providing you don't want to put it on like quarter of an inch thick or something daft, you'll be fine with it. It's really nice stuff. Um, <clears throat> but I'll carry on sanding now, and uh, you know, uh, it's just a case of you know when you sand, I start off with a very coarse sandpaper. Always sand with the grain wherever you can. Get all the scratches out with the coarse cool stuff, and just get finer and finer, and. Uh, usually end up with 180 grit I've got here that I'm going over with it next and and just uh, careful and uh, be prepared for a long uh, a long job but uh, good stuff well um, more of the same I've spent the morning uh, sanding basically Ugh. it goes on and on and on but I think you'll agree now it's it's uh, it's looking pretty handsome there kind of thing and you know a bit closer up a lot of detail sanding mainly getting these uh, little ridges on the edge even without any like bulbous bits I mean I tend to do the whole thing you know don't just concentrate on a little area um, I, and I, I, I use very uh, you know various grit to sandpaper as anybody would um, but the important thing is, is you've got to get all the scratches out, and uh, any way to do that is to get, um, you know, uh, get finer and finer with the sandpaper. Remove all the scratches with quite a heavy grit sandpaper, something like that, which is 40 grit, which is very heavy, but you get at least you get results with it. And then just move down the grades. So um, I feel we are getting somewhere. There's a long way to go, though. Uh, I've not just done the back front, I've been doing the back as well, so evening all this out. Um, I had a little play with um, my airbrush, um, just to try and look, look like what how this might shade out, and uh, it, it should look okay I think. Um, but yeah, more of the same there. I haven't started really sanding the sides yet, um, they are pretty rough pretty rough in here but um, it's got quite a ring to it now so that's quite encouraging um, but uh, yeah just